And the thing is, Samsung have played a fairly similar style to SKT here at Worlds. It's just that now they're up against the real thing and they're losing tempo very quickly. I agree with you. So much of it is in game. And the first game was by far the closest one where it seemed to come down to mere seconds. The first ban that is different than what happened in game one is this Olaf ban by SKT where last time they banned Misfortune. However, Samsung has identical bans to the last time they were blue side. Well, with the jungle pool pinched more heavily, and knowing that Ambition sort of leads the way for Samsung, live and die by the Ambition, do they prioritize an early jungle pick? Or Zyra was, you know, first pick blue side for Samsung. I don't think that's the option right now. I think it's very strategic what SKT did by banning the two junglers because we wanted to see Ambition on a powerful jungler. But here, the Lee Sin, when Elise is still on the board, doesn't actually give them that much of an advantage. And I don't think they want to pick the Zyra because they're a little bit afraid that Wolf has learned how to play Misfortune. Definitely true. I mean, teams have shown over and over the counters to Zyra. Now, it's definitely risky to early pick it. And I don't think that SKT have to do that either. So, SK Telecom have now got 30 seconds to lock in their first rotation. They went Jin Olaf in the previous game. Obviously, Olaf is banned. Nidalee's out. Leeson's off the table. So, safe picks. And uh, Baker's going to be very wow. confident to anything with this Oriana. Yeah, well, he did have to pick it before Crown's mid laner in the first game. Confident in doing it again. And this is with just the Rise, Cinder, and Cassiopeia banned. So, would Crown do it? I mean, see, yeah, you say just with the, you know, Cassiopeia and Ryze ban, but those have been the three champions that he plays. He played True. Varus one time, tried to play Varus, and Bjergs and Solo killed him instantly uh, with the Syndra. So definitely uh, lost a little bit of confidence on that, because that was something that he played a lot during the regular season as well, was the Varus. Another thing that he fell back to, however, it's just so vulnerable. Yeah, I completely agree. We were wondering about the depth of Crown's champion pool because he had been so good on that Reach for the stars. Champions. Thing is, Victor is still available, and that was an okay matchup for them against the Orianna. But if SKT has struggled against a champion, it's been a rally Done. install. And let me say again, the effects of SKT, what they do so often in these best of series where they let their opponents you know, choose their best champions and have, go ahead, crown, have your victor. And then they beat him with it. Now he's reluctant to go back to it, even though that has been his most comfortable champion, his best performing champion. Now they're reaching. Yeah, SKT has been better than any other team in the history of League of Legends of attacking the mind of their opponents. Whereas other times you're just specifically banning the optimal champions in every situation. But SKT, throw a bunch of curveballs and really make the other team doubt their strengths. Thing is though, yes, uh, Aurelian Soul, as you said, quick shot, did find a victory versus SKT in the group stages. And if Samsung, you know, are going to have to reach, this is a great champion to do it with. I don't know uh, how confident I am in Crown's ability on the champion, though, because if we were spying on his solo kill accounts, uh, actually wasn't yeah. that great. So. My level of confidence in Crown's Aurelian Soul is about the same <laughs> as in Bengi's Nidalee when they first picked it after he <laughs> never played it in a competitive game. And Bengi's Nidalee did show up, so, you know, there is this chance. Let's remember how you play Aurelian Soul, though, right? This this is going to have to be an early push. There's going to have to be roaming plays, making proactive plays. And Crown is going to have to do that against Baker's Oriana. All right, obviously the MF Hover is as a reply to Ezreal Zyra. Samsung, I feel I've graf uh, crafted a well-rounded team composition with a mix of strengths, early, late, team fight, frontline. SK Telecom, do they run the counter to Zyra of Misfortune or the safe counter, the more reliable Karma, I would expect it to be Karma. So they were already able to win the lane with Karma. And we know he would have, at maximum, a week of practice on the pick because they thought it was a picking error the first time Support MF got picked in this tournament. So still has his options here. They don't even necessarily need the Karma if they wanted to go with more sustain because of the difference in Samsung's pick going Ezreal instead of Kate. Exactly. Ezreal on the tier early is not going to have a lot of lane presence. And this Jin plus Nami combo has huge poke ability, but also the sustain for the bottom lane. And the bottom lane has been, you know, such a huge turning point. If you can hold on to that area of the map early, uh, then it really gives a big boost to try and play off for the other two 
Do you think it's fair to say Samsung Galaxy cannot afford to mess up any dives with this Lee Sin and this Aurelian Soul because you know the play pattern of both of those champions? I feel like it's safe to say they can't mess up at any point in this game, <laughs> Quick Shot. They are backs against the walls, down 2-0 to SK Telecom in the finals. And yes, you're right, having <laughs> those two champions does kind of exacerbate that issue. And I'm really surprised that they actually put Ruler on Ezreal instead of on Caitlyn because the go-to composition that works so well with Aurelian Sol was Aurelian Sol Caitlyn. You just put him behind the dragon and you hit turrets from long range. They can't do exactly the same thing with the Ezreal, and I think it's because Ruler is doubting his Caitlyn right now after poor games on it. It's frustrating because of how impactful he could have been if the team was on a more even keel, if they had gone into those mid-game team fights not being in a 5,000 gold hole. And that's exactly what Samsung have to try to avoid this time around. I'm going to ask you for potentially one last time. Jump onto Twitter, vote. We saw it was a 75% in favor of hashtag SKTWIN. Los Angeles and the Staples Center for game three of your world championship final. Put your hands together for Samsung Galaxy taking on SK Telecom T1. And so much of this comes down to crown and whether or not he gets the early shove on Aurelian Saul and then can go impact the other lanes. It's so important that this champion gets going early. When we talk to people like Huhi and the other people who have been successful on this champion, it's because it gives you all the options in the world because you shove every champion early in the game, but you have to convert on those options. Otherwise, the pick doesn't work. No crazy first blood shenanigans today, unlike New York. And we're gonna see these standard lanes match up. Now, when SKT were in losing lanes in game two, they did fall behind in CS. However, that was all. They didn't give up too many kills, they didn't give up too many towers, and that allowed them to bounce back when Samsung made some mistakes. Yeah, Samsung have actually had you know quite a few good moves early on in the game. And as far as the other lanes for Crown to affect, I feel like his target has got to be bottom lane. Uh, because, you know, Duke has actually already shown how well he can evade, you know, pressure up on the top side. And even then, getting a kill onto the trundle, not the hugest factor for this team. So I think it's actually very clear, even to SKT, what Samsung want to do uh, early on in this game. And that is Crown, getting triangle control of mid and trying to go affect that bottom lane. I do think, as you said, you know, it is good that Ruler's not on the Kate again because he's shown uh, with a couple of mistakes that it doesn't look like that is really his champion he's most you know, confident on right now. Uh, you know, the netting backwards and summoner spells. Uh, we'll see, though. Crown goes in probably for a Raptor steal. Yep, very standard play here. A lot of times they're trying to take the one Raptor. They also get the deport in. Very surprised he didn't place it over the wall to try and spot the Elise at the red buff, but a, a safe invade, something that could have been very dangerous, but he gets off the board. Yeah, he wants to make sure that there's no crazy play where Elise is coming from behind him to gank him at the expected Raptor steal there. Uh, does pay off, grabs the both. Uh, we're watching Ruler and Cordial J again go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bang and Wolf. Bang and Wolf, arguably the most seasoned duo lane in the world. We've been playing together for three years. Duke's gonna be pushing Cuba out, but Bang and Wolf, they're under some pressure. Ruler and Cordia J, that's a Ignite Zyra, trying to shove in, trying to get poked down, but they need to get through this mana pool, through the sustainables, and through that ebb and flow field, which will be coming in for Nami. Yeah, that's a, definitely a good point to bring up as far as the experience of the bottom lanes. We were going over the, you know, histories of these two, and, you know, Ruler and Core JJ barely over 20 games played together before this series. Uh, yeah. in a competitive setting, whereas Bang and Wolf have been playing for almost 300 games. Yeah, a gigantic difference for sure, and I think that fits into the poise of these lanes. If SKT's losing the lane, they're still able to bounce back from it, whereas the experience by Samsung is so recent that you don't necessarily know how they respond to adversity. What a difference. All of that advantage Rula and Core JJ built up in terms of the poke and the pressure. Ruler is now out of consumables, eats himself from Aqua uh, Prison. Taking a look at the Dragon, it is an Infernal Drake, straight out the uh, gate, so a little bit of a juicier target for either of these teams. Both junglers with early game impact could look to set themselves up, and its ambition was the small invade. Crown, oh, gets the stun onto Faker, but doesn't even break the shield. Come on, Protect. 
greater than Star Surge at this rank. And let me just touch on Ambition here, what he's doing with this invade. He's, he wants to make sure that he doesn't waste time on the pure, you know, pathing top lane for the top lane gank. Knows that he has time because Poppy wants to get those minions. Bottom lane actually will be more impactful. Ganks at the same time. Good flash from 4JJ. Sidestep from Ruler. Ambition's looking for Duke. Flash is still available. Sonic Wave followed. Duke holds on to the flash for now. Chomp, not gonna be enough for a stun. Duke gets away with his life. Crown, running a little low on mana, but still pushing this wave in, shoving Faker in it again and again. Yeah, interesting ganks there. Really just trying to get the summoner spell out of Duke, and they would need to make a return gank before he can hit level six if they want to be able to convert that one. And the same is true for the bottom lane. Both ganks do find a flash on a priority target. Core JJ on Dire is one as well. Mid lane, though. Don't chase into the fog of war around mid lane is one of the first rules uh, learn as a jungler if you don't have vision on that side, especially early on. Crown just wants to be able to continue to shove in so he can get better recall timings here. Interesting that Ambition is also harassing the Raptors when Crown is relatively low on resources at this stage in the lane. Looks like Aurelian Saul would want to recall before making this play. Ambition is going to be in a little bit of trouble. Flash is available to him. Faker, no shockwave though. So Ambition takes the poke and backs away. We did touch on, you know, the experience as far as pro play difference of the bottom lane, but I want to back that up with a few stats as well. Coming into this series, you know, Ruler was averaging down 6 CS at 15 minutes across the board, even though Samsung have only lost one game. That's a lot of CS to be down early on, especially for having won so many. Uh, you know, whereas Bang, we've already talked about this, he's got the highest KDA of any player at Worlds, and he had the highest damage per minute of any AD carry, fulfilling his role to a T. Yeah, and you can see it in this game right here already being so massive. And I like the Nami adaptation against Zyra as the gank approaches from the mid lane. Level six. He's flashed away from... Crown, if he got pulled back into that, would have gone flash and goes down. Yeah, and it's the it's the little things that SKT do. It's not like they're pulling out this insane support pick, but they have taken the time to figure out that they can beat Sire without having to go for the support misfortune, which takes away the fear of that pick as the series has progressed. The Jin Nami is actually winning this lane pretty substantially down on the bottom side. Has had a little bit of help from Bengi's Elise. Um, no flash on Core JJ. Gonna. Put some additional pressure onto that lane. Cubey's been able to farm up to six, even with a gank up top and no flash on Duke, still behind in CS. Yeah, I mean, honestly, even though Samsung are, you know, right there, neck and neck as far as gold is concerned, it doesn't seem, feel like they have very many options on the map. Because we go down the checklist, okay, Aurelian Soul is going to want to push in. He doesn't have, you know, early purchases of damage, and neither does an Ezreal, which is the lane we said he wanted to attack. You know, it's a tier Ezreal uh, versus a Nami Jin lane that's already ahead. If Samsung is to make an early move, it's going to be difficult for them to convert on the play. And SKT can afford to play reactionary. <laughs> this time around, Star Search doesn't find Faker. Faker actually ghosts up, realizes he's down an ultimate. And there's support coming in from Ambition. Yeah, down an ultimate and uh, down in jungle pressure. As he knows, Bangi is purchasing at the moment. So he rightly backs off and burns the very low cooldown summoner spell there. Now we also have yet to see Crown make any substantial roams. He wasn't able to take his lane shove in the river or even sync up with jungle invades as of yet. And that's what we've seen out of the successful Aurelian Souls. Potential jungle invade here. Vision from Ambition on to Bengi. Ambition's got support from Q, Vase, and Pings onto Crown as well, but no roam just yet from the mid laners. You know, that being said, Crown's doing very well in CS, and it's kind of equalizing the gold difference of the bottom lane that's in favor of SKT. Plus, that control mid lane does result in a red buff steal. Not the largest of objectives, but Samsung definitely uh, something for their trouble. These wards will see any sort of move to the bottom lane as well. Ruler's caught up, stun down, curtain fall. Damage will be blocked here by Core JJ as Ruler standing behind his supports. Yeah, and what we see here is Samsung would want to be able to go down to that side of the map, but they can't because of the pressure. Oh, dashed away from. Ambition gets out of range of the shockwave. Would have been enough damage to kill him, but regardless, uh, backs away. Yeah, and it's the pressure of this bottom lane that's stopping Crown from having a large impact on it because he can't necessarily roam through the river. He's going to try coming through the brush, though. All right, flashes are available for Bang. Here we go. Wolf, number number one. one. It comes up, Star Surge. The Star Voice of Light locks down Bang. Celestial Expansion is out. Here comes Bangy. Bangy gets a cocoon. 
first blood onto Bang. The tidal wave is flashed away from as Core JJ runs for his life. Exactly as we set it up. This is a tier Ezreal, very low damage. Aurelian sold no damage purchases. And the bottom lane of SKT is a Jin with early armor penetration. They can afford to play reactionary there. Overextension from Samsung does give up the first blood. Yeah, Cuvee hits Duke out of the duel, but that gank was awful from Crown. You could say that they said, hey, we really need help bottom lane. We can't let Bang get going. But for all the things Kobe mentioned, Tier versus the Serrated Dirk on the Bang, they're going to lose this duel. Look how late Bang he actually is to this play after all of the damage he's been burning. Even if it was 2v3, they might have still had to run away. But Bang he comes in, secures the first blood for Bang, and easily build on the strength of that duel. If you want that play to work, you need to bring up all of your Everyone. damage, exactly. You have to bring your teleport, you have to bring your jungler. They didn't even have, you know, ambition down there passing. Now, they will get the consolation prize of the dragon, which is an infernal drake, which is extremely important. So, at least they do get this counter. Uh, they need to sneak it very quickly, though, as many on the way. Any map, some threats coming in. Crown should be able to get out. You need that common of legend, not this time around. Boots of Swiftness gonna help him out. So first blood um, onto Bang, plus 25 CS, let's call it. Gives him a 750 gold lead, already at 10 minutes. Um, even in the mid lane, that roam from Crown allowed Faker to claw his way back into the lead. And for Samsung Galaxy, they do have some scaling on their side again this time around. A lot more of a risky early game. Crown once again takes the shockwave from the blue buff Faker. Yeah, when Faker is able to get blue buff, he can start applying this type of pressure, which is very important. And as you mentioned, Quickshot, because of all of the gold lead being on SKT's AD carry, this mid game becomes incredibly important. It does indeed. Voice of Light comes out. Bengi is going to repel apps as Celestial Expansion is not finding a target, and Bengi just gets out of range of that sonic wave. It looked like a close fight, but nobody really is sure. You know, and also, most of the damage goes to the jungler there, where Bengi can go back and farm. Now Faker has control of the mid lane. He clears out some pink wards. Crown has to go recall uh, on the Aurelian Soul, and Faker gets to push this lane in with that blue buff. Won't even lose any mana off of it. It's a thousand gold, gentlemen, and Samsung Galaxy's first few plays have not landed. They get maybe two more shots, if I'm thinking of this, this game, is the pressure builds for Faker in the mid lane, and Crown's effective gank range diminishes. If you take a shot at SKT, you better not miss. Luckily, Bang did miss and Ruin survives. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's also set up this mid game a little bit and talk about why Faker is you know, as great as he is and why everyone talks about how is the best player. So much of it is are the predictive plays that he makes. I mean, you can only get so good as far as... Well, speaking of which... Speaking of the devil, he's able to get a good chunk off there. Shockwave, flash away from again. Flash. And Faker is blocking these roams from Crown. Because of the blue buff and the shove he's had and how he's used his ultimate to harass so much, he's kept Crown back in lane. And Drill Stall always wants to push and disappear into the fog of war. But Faker's disappearing first and preventing Crown from being able to make those roams. Exactly. He plays off the expected behavior of his opponent, punishes them, uh, you know, before they even realize that they are in a fight. Bengi also clearing out vision, so Faker has more room to work with all around this side of the map. They've got, uh, you know, early, award, uh, early alert system on Ambition. An exceptional play from SK Telecom to get the advantage. Uh, we've not watched Duke and Cubay a huge amount, and even though CS is relatively even, Duke's been bullying Cubay a lot. Uh, in his face, been pushing that wave in to Cubay's tower over and over and over again, despite the fact Duke was actually the recipient of the first gank from Samsung Galaxy. Yeah, but then there was no follow-up, and he hit level six on Trundle, and now he's building up his way towards sustain. So unless Ambition was going to send three people up there, which you'd think they'd be able to do with the Aurelian Saul and the Lee Sin, uh, but they haven't been able to do that because of the mid lane pressure. Okay. Exactly what's been happening for 13 minutes. Cubay needs to find that great teleport play. Throw the hammer down. Crown looking for Faker. No ghost yet, and never chase into the fog of war. You don't know what's waiting in the darkness. Definitely true. The darkness, though. Uh, Bengi's moving up to the top side to look at uh, Cubay. All right, let's follow the cocoon from Bengi. He needs to try to lock Cubay down. He hits the uh, pillar, actually blocks it. Oh, once again. Wow. Easy peasy. Duke and Bengi literally took no damage. Shred the resist, tank the turret with the guy healing off of him, and they 
like you say, make it look easy. Melt them like butter there. Also, this Poppy is stacking armor, whereas early Sork Boots on Bangi allow him to just rip through the Poppy. Not to mention that subjugate you talked about. Baker, though, fighting in the brush. He was indeed Shockwave still available and traded a lot of damage. Voice of Light, Faker gets Command Protect. Through Shockwave is sidestepped. Crown doesn't get the kill. Crown was trying to bait him into that two shot barrage. Uh, Faker didn't quite take it, but pretty close little 1v1 there. Yeah, worst trade Faker has taken in this lane. He's going to be forced into a recall, and I wonder if Ambition would want to go for the kill. No, oh, not if you miss. <laughs> What was the line? Uh, if you take a shot, you best not miss, Kobe. Yeah, well, he missed. The, 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 the funny thing there is, too, Faker had Flash. He held on to it because he's like, Ambition? Ha! No big deal. I know that I can just walk away from this one. That right there is discipline. I think he's going to find Ambition. Also a little hubris. It is indeed. Ambition does want to run the risk of getting caught out. Uh, look at the four pink wards in the bottom quadrant of the jungle around this dragon pit. It's a minute away until spawning, so Samsung know they have a lot of defensive vision if Ruler and Core JJ were gonna get jumped on. Yeah, and Samsung is hoping so much to be able to turn a positive play in this bottom lane where they're down nearly 40 CS to the Ghostblade Jin. But Ruler just doesn't have the items yet. He's gonna need to complete some of these and get about a 20 to 22 minute power spike if somehow Samsung could get a four to five man dive in the bottom lane and get him some kills before he actually just transitions to that power spike, it would be a way for them to get back in this game. But that's a huge investment for a play that probably isn't going to happen. There is, but Jack, if there's one uh, positive thing here, Samsung are down a less amount of gold than I've seen them down at 15 minutes. It's only a 1,000. Um, it did feel a lot more substantial in games one and two, correction two close. Also, uh, But they're not hemorrhaging more. Also, I yeah. Say, but like, <laughs> well, honestly, it, well, here we go. SKT setting up a play. Oh, is that my fault? Did I give the cast a curse? Or JJ still got Strangle Falls available. Going to throw it down underneath Bengi's feet. So a little bit of time and ultimates invested and the flash from Bengi. Good counter. And the thing I was about to point out for Samsung, in addition to, you know, not being down as much as last time, as you said, quick shot, <laughs> is that they're in a better situation as far as the vision is concerned. Uh, and they have been keeping up their wards. Plus, as you can see right now, four pink wards in the inventory. You know, they are doing their due diligence uh, and keeping those wards down in order to set up these plays. Plus, yeah. looking ahead, ahead, go ahead 2-0 as far as the Drake count. The Drake control is actually very important. The Ocean Drake for the extended laning phase, very important, as well as the Infernal Drake for the potential late game scaling. Got to knock SKT a little bit for, considering they've had the dual lane advantage, not being able to get the vision up around the Drake can be considered a failure by SKT. And I guess the counter argument, if Bengi had made that gank stick, they would have got a kill, some tower pressure, maybe the Dragon as well. But unfortunately, Ruler and Core JJ outplayed, survived longer. Frozen Fist is now picked up, that Icebomb Gauntlet. So Ruler's going to have a little bit more leeway in that lane. But it's still such a significant difference. Uh, Nearly a thousand gold between the two AD carries. And it actually is a very important purchase uh, to get some armor versus the flat armor pendant of the Jin that he's going to build. But SKT actually closed in on mid with multiple members. Shockwave connects this time around and flash away from Crown as he gets out of range of that bubble. Tower first blood though, going to be on the list. Not going to get secured just yet. As poor JJ arrives just in time and the wave is cleared by the stars. Of crown. That play was super similar to something the analyst desk did in the pregame where they set up the support in the jungle from both sides of the mid lane as Faker goes for a play and set up relentless pressure on the mid lane turret. This is a play that SKT runs fairly often and it's quite successful. They're pushing crown back, nearly taking the turret. And it is also born of that style where Faker's constant pressure in the mid lane slowly whittling down this turret. Now SKT trying to move in for that Vision Wars, but Samsung doing a good job of defending themselves this time around. I mean, we, we honestly have to look at it from Samsung's point of view, from the underdog point of view, to try and see where the cracks are. I mean, that's where, that's where all the plays have to happen. For SK Telecom, the expected outcome is 3-0. The mm -hmm. predictions were there, the caliber of the team, the world's buff that they seem to show up and peak at the right time. And for Samsung, if they can stall to late, if they can play spoiler, they need to do that three more times to get their hands on the Summoner's Cup. Also got to get their first kill yes. of this game <laughs> because SKT, you got to start small in this one. You're thinking about World Championship. Let's get a kill 
or a turret, and also defend this mid lane turret where Faker is relentlessly pushing. Look at the wards up on the sides as well as the pinboard clear. How's Crown gonna actually defend this? Solo gold going over to Faker, that's huge. Yeah, big time. Town first blood against Aurelian Soul. That's not something you say a huge amount, especially when they're not roaming. This time around, Crown's gonna get surrounded. Three members shot away. No summoners. Decent stun onto Faker, but Cocoon locks him up. Teleport's being channeled. Duke may get interrupted. It looks like he was. Flash over the wall from Ambition, and Bengi follows over. Curtain call fired, and Core JJ blocked one shot. The third and fourth, they don't have the range. And just the kill to SKT, but they took the tower a moment earlier. Yeah, and credit again to SKT to just shoving in the mid lane over and over again and making Crown have so few options. Bottom lane. Oh, Ruler, this has happened again and again and again. There's no flash available. Well, manages to Arcane shift away, but it's Faker that kills a Ruler for well, the fourth kill of the game. And quick shot, how often are we saying there's no flash available? Because SKT is using the flashes with the first play and punishing the lack of flashes with the second play. They are so far ahead in tempo in order to pull off these plays. Meanwhile, the follow-up here from Banky over the walls, and Ambition is going to be able to safeguard out of the range, but it doesn't matter. SKT take their toll. Faker gets his tax. Another outer turret. Yeah, now it's four and a half thousand gold, and you have to start thinking of SKT. Could this be another 3-0 finals victory like they had in 2013? And it's incredible when you think of it from a large scale. When we first started League of Legends, we were wondering with how much they changed the game and how quickly some players were burning out, would we ever have a repeat champion, let alone a team that could win three and four years and a player who could be considered the best player in the world for four years? They're already the only ones to do it twice, making a very good case moments away even from doing it thrice. Feels like the inevitability. The expectation wasn't there coming into Worlds. Um, but after seeing SKT in the group stages, that feeling that it was going to be three times, the hat trick started to build and grow. And it's by punishing mistakes, by punishing tendencies of their opponent's team. Ruler has been left alone multiple times. Look how well executed this dive is. Kubek gets a decent stun, but some damage onto Bengi and Duke. And, you know, it's just. It is methodical and calculated. Yeah, and the play that Samsung would have to bounce back, SKT is already blocked. They don't have anyone in the dual lane with which to dive uh, someone on the other side of the map. And they already have Jin in the mid lane to try and block a push over there. So really, SKT just playing incredibly sharp as the series progresses. Meanwhile, they're even playing defensively on their weak side of the map. We talk about ebb and flow, and this has been kind of our conversation over this series. Faker, you can see, yes, he is bottom. He is part uh, of the gold income for SKT, receiving them anyway, but he doesn't try and defend that turret that's about to go down. They see the, the only dangerous spot on the map in exchange for the huge play top where they get even more. Wow, 6,000 gold down, five kills to zero. Samsung do have a couple dragons under their belt. There's cloud spawning in 20 seconds, but it doesn't matter if you can't find an opportunity to fight. Right, Faker picked up a Luden's Echo after Gorilla Nomicron. Ruler's gonna arcane shift then insta flash away. Once again, Summoner spell down. Ambition follows the Sonic Wave. There's not a lot of follow-up as the GLP spits out some ice balls. Ruler's gonna arcane shift forward. Voice of Light uh -huh. won't kill Bengi. Bengi actually proto belts to safety after being tagged by True Shot Barrage, but Samsung throw everything and the kitchen sink and don't even get a kill. I think that may get a third Drake for it though, and that is the one thing really going in their favor. The problem is, even with all the Drake control, SKT are gonna go back and purchase, and the combat strength for them right now uh, is more than enough to still take the team by victory. Yeah, and as far as teams that would benefit from Infernal Drake, this is one of the lower compositions for Samsung. Aurelian Saul doesn't really build that much AP to multiply. Blue build Ezreal also doesn't have that much attack damage early. There's a lot better champions they could have to try and take advantage of that Infernal Drake. So, yes, it's cool that they have the three Drakes, but that is nowhere close to the 5,000 gold lead. Bengi Proto belts forward. Not going to go into human form to look for the cocoon, though. And Ruler's able to escape with his life. You know, we touched on the SKT legacy, but it's even more amazing when you look at the fact that they've changed players, they've built teams around Bengi and Faker uh, over the years and, and continue to be the most relevant international team from Korea. They've won more international titles than any other League of Legends team.
And the most impressive thing to me is the longevity of Banky and Baker. Both of those players have sat on the bench. Those are good. Those are going to be the only two players, you know, with the triple crown. Okay, oh, Ray, run the other way, buddy. Yeah, can only see. Deadly flourish could lock him down, and it does. A couple extra shots, and Fuke sets it up. Bang brings it home. Triple wow. cup. And the Infinity Edge also being built early instead of the Dusk Blade, making sure he's got some late game insurance on that Jin. And I, I agree with you guys. The duration of dominance for these players. Bengi also just sticking with SKT and Coma as well, knowing when to sub the players in to really utilize the six-man roster in their last two big world championship victories has been very impressive. Now they go for Ruler. Oh, Bubble, Ruler. Tidal Wave, Curtain Call. Maybe that is oh, the Curtain Mark. Call. SK Telecom sieging the mid in a turret at 25 minutes with an 8,000 gold lead. It is both beautiful in its irony and simplicity that Curtain Call secures more towers for SKT. It's it's almost hard to watch to the complete destruction that SKT brings to their opponents. Just taking them out in all aspects of the game. Yeah, and they have the right answer to so many things. They know where you're going to be going. They're there before you. They know what you're going to be picking, so they prep a counter for it. Duke's Trundle, the all best right, Trundle we've we seen for sure. And Bang <laughs> already preemptively retreating Crown coming down the mid lane. And guess what? Now they have an answer. Where's Crown going to go? Duke's going to throw up the pillar. Let's get stunned up. And GLP's already been used by Crown. Decent pin. Stunned onto Duke. This might be the first kill. Dragon's Rage kick. Voice of Light is sidestepped. And Wolf is being tagged by those stars. Cube stuns Wolf against the wall. Still not down. Shockwave catches two. And finally, Samsung Galaxy are on the board. It's one kill to seven. But now they're routed, running for their lives. Fake is on a killing spree at 3-0 and 1, and they trade it back. We said a couple minutes ago Samsung had to get that first kill, but the gold lead was about 2,000 for SKT then. Step one. Ah, crap. Forgot about step two. Now they're down 9,000 gold to this team. Watch this one more time. Duke doesn't actually alt anywhere in here. Yeah, the reason they, you know, get this kill is because, you know, Faker's so far away, and Faker is a, such a big part of that team fight. A little aggressive here. Wolf is the one that's going to pay the price. Honestly, though, Samsung, they'll take what they can get. A one-for-one one at this point in the game uh, is definitely some much-needed gold in their pockets. And really, the only answer there was a great snipe from Bang to land that snare, setting Faker up. Again and again and again, that Jin has worked in Bang's favor. And you know, you were talking about how SKT sort of crushed their opponents. We've mentioned sort of the mental aspect of the game, beating opponents on their best champions. Victor was available this game, was, yeah. was there. And because of the game one result, Crown did not go back to the champion he's played more than 50% of his professional career games on. No, that's a ridiculous amount. Yeah. Samsung felt like they had to do something different. and. With the posture of Faker to pick Orianna so early, it just showed how fearless he was against the potential of another victor. And I feel like Samsung respected that and tried to do something different, but Faker has been the victim of a few bad games against Aurelian Saul, and it definitely feels like he's improved the way he's playing, always being in the right place at the right time whenever Crown tries to make a romance. This is what Faker plays like when he's angry. Um... Honestly, it doesn't feel like they're that angry in this game. SKT feel actually kind of lax. Uh, and similar to Samsung, in Samsung, in the early game, in the first game, they showed so much fight, you know, so much willingness to make those proactive plays, you know, reach out uh, to try and take some chances. But SKT have kind of removed that from their play style. I agree, and we talk about the history of Bengi and Faker going for three world championships. Bang and Wolf are going for their second, and they're going to be some of the only players to ever do that. We talk about how long they've been a dual lane together, playing nearly 300 oh. pro games. Oh, Ruler's done for. Curtain Cold not even needed. Wolf and Bang speeding each other up, healing each other. They're going for more. They are indeed. Flash away from poor JJ. To save his life. And when you go back to the regular season as well, Bang almost always topping the damage per minute charts. For as much as Faker has been dominant, Bang has become probably the best AD carry, at least at Worlds here, and the damage numbers back it up, and with the World Championships are going to back it up as well. Bang also making a legacy for himself alongside Faker. Oh, he's being run down by Bang. Flash away from Cuvee. Oh, oh the shot down. The witch. Knock up onto Duke. That was a good play by Cuvee to find the stun, and again, 
Small wins, small advantages at 30 minutes, down 10k. Don't worry, Jad. It's still relevant. On, Even though he just died right there, <laughs> you can write it on the, the tombstone for going Bang, the still time. cementing a legacy for himself, <laughs> even if he gets caught out in the third game. Uh, Cocoon's caught Crown, as is the Aqua Prison. Decent enough flash away. Voice of Light saves Crown's life, but he throws every single spell available to jump out. And it's just desperation plays here for Samsung. Infernal Drake is up, so this will most likely go to Samsung. So that's four dragons in 30 minutes, and the next will be Elder. Yeah, yeah. We are downplaying this because of the huge gold advantage. Uh, but once again, Sam uh, Samsung are faced with the farm for late mentality, which is actually probably the only page left in their uh, playbook at this point. That was a huge pick for them, though, to earn another Drake. But it looks like SKT wants to make them pay even more for it. Well, this would be a That'll time to try and get back. They scout it with the Trishop Barrage. You'd want SKT to make Juve it. Juve has off. teleport. Samsung yeah. can try and make a playback. It's a lot of damage. damage. Rulers jump forward. Already used the true shot barrage. Wolf is killed by ambition. It looks oh, like we Samsung go. are coming back. They've killed Faker. Found Bengi. And moving on to Duke Crown. He's tagging him with the stars. They're peeling backwards. Baron's the target. They can get it. They already have four drakes. None of them are mountains, but they've killed three. Bang would have his ultimate, and Duke doesn't. So. This is gonna slingshot him back! Yeah, SKT is so risky, they slip up here. Do you believe Staples? Samsung Galaxy, pick up the Baron! And it came out of nowhere. And suddenly, the Drakes we've been downplaying will play a huge part in this game because there are five extra outer turrets for Samsung to clean up with this Baron. There's a huge amount of gold standing on the map. This was simply SKT starting up a four-man Baron. No respect for Samsung's ability to collapse there, and they punish them heavily for it. And so much of SKT's confidence has worked for them. This time, it absolutely works against them because the True Shot Barrage scouted them while Bang wasn't in the Baron pit, and they stayed on the Baron. It was easily punished there by Samsung. Let's keep track of this Baron power play because it should be one of the larger of the tournaments. It needs to be if they want to come back in the game. At what point am I allowed to start believing? Because yes, that is a Baron play. Never stop yes, believing, quick there is 6,000 gold down. Never stop. But Samsung have started to play scrappy. Four members of SKT moving into the jungle. Bengi is rooted up by the grasping roots and Bengi and Duke going away. Bengi takes a lot of damage. Proto belts out and the minion wave is pushing top. Yeah, Samsung has a good shove going on right here and Crown never left this wave. It is actually very hard for a team down and gold with Baron to get a big Baron power play, but so far with that rotation, it's very impressive. Two towers. Gonna steal away a red buff, get deep vision in the top quadrant of the jungle. What was a 10,000 gold lead is now 4,000. And Baron stats and dragons helping Samsung mitigate that even closer. Well, now we get to go back to your very early point, Quickshot, about the champions selected here for Samsung because they are not the best late game scaling. And they're gonna have to make this extra momentum work and make these picks work for them. Yeah, and they have to be able to get control of the Elder Drake because that's their window into victory. Four Elemental Drakes stacking with the Elder if they're able to get it. And this game, as far as our narrative was going, was pretty much over with the way SKT was systematically drowning Samsung out. But as it usually switches around the other way, SKT makes the mistake and now can Samsung punish? Let's find out. Samsung trying to push up. Command attack thrown down by Faker. Cube gonna threaten the tower, and it's picked up by Samsung. That's four turrets during this Baron buff they've been able to take. SKT are still keeping up the 1 4 1, though. Okay, gentlemen, the Elder Drake spawns around 36 minutes into the game. Ruler and Crown pushing out the bottom lane. Cube is gonna go meet and match with Duke to at least slow down and thwart that top lane push. Could another tower be secured? SKT seems better poised to defend. There is a ward behind them. SKT do have teleport available on Duke, but Cube is keeping sight on Duke. Going for Faker! Faker is down! They've got him! Faker's down! Crown is pushing forward. It's at the cost of Ambition's life. Crown is zoning away SK Telecom. Another tower has fallen. 5,000 gold on the power play. Ambition! 
Ashen makes the huge play on Jungle versus Baker. Kicks him into the team, and that's going to be an inhibitor to it. It's not done yet. Curtain ball. Throw down by Bang. The base is open wide. Cubase joins the fight. Gonna look for Bangy. The poppy copter could be thrown down. Star surges, sidestepped as Crown doesn't find a stun. Cubay again, zoning. Ruler's on the inhibitor, knocking it away. Crown's very yeah, aggressive. Very careful here. Flash available. Damage out. Cubay on the front line. Doesn't find the stun. Onto Duke. Ruler and Cubay running for their lives. Fake is up in 10 seconds. Ruler, he can shifted forward. He's very aggressive. Caught out. Locked down. Cocooned up. Oh. Shut down. Bye, bang. And SKT defend the inhib. Banky and Bang played that back line so incredibly well with Ruler shifting in and they dodge out, land the cocoon and take him down so close. Yeah, watching this play one more time as well. Faker was looking actually to try and get some type of aggressive engage when Ambition sneaks Ooh. around the side. War Jump Flash doesn't give him time to react. Also, Faker's Flash is down. And it's almost as if SKT was lulled into complacency by their own dominance in this game and weren't necessarily respecting the Baron power play there or the flank from the Lee Sin. This means they have to now reset and figure out how they can win this game that they had been winning for the first 28 minutes. Samsung Galaxy now on the warpath, trying to close this gap. 3,000 gold remains for them. Two and a half to pick up in the Elder Dragon that we keep setting up. This is going to be the battleground to really decide uh, the way this game plays out. That was a six and a half, sorry, 6,000 gold Baron power play. And Samsung Galaxy averaged five and a half thousand coming into this series. They did that against SKT down 0-2 in the series. Elder is up and alive. A minute 40 till Baron, and Samsung don't pull the trigger yet. Pick potential is huge right here. Who can actually start the fight first? Would it be Bengi's Cocoon, Faker Shockwave, or could Ambition make another play? Because if Samsung can pick off Faker or Bang, they could actually win the game after being down 10,000 gold at one point because that would transition to Elder, and they could push to win with that. Either pick SKT off or separate SKT using the Poppy Ultimate and snare with Zyra the rest of the members into a teamfight scenario, thereby artificially creating a numbers advantage and basically picking SKT. Yeah, and with that, though, SKT is trying to restore order to the map <laughs> right here. They have the Grundle pushing on the other side who can make it to the inhibitor. No GA, but you have to send two people to stop him, actually. QB would have to get down there, or he has to start the fight right now. Let's find out. Order has not been restored because Samsung are defying the game three rules of logic. Bounced back, punishing some mistakes. Look at that iceberg of a mountain. And it's turned around. <laughs> I don't know. I'll spend it's a great, it's a great visual. I'm just <laughs> visualizing this floating mountain here. Oh, Court JJ does get companies out. Not taken down yet. Duke's siege on the top lane is stopped. Elder is still available, and SKT are setting up. Also, remember how important this vision battle is around the Elder Drake. We mentioned the pick potential on Samsung, but that is there for SKT as well. Anytime you have a late game Jin, pick potential is definitely there. Staples is electric as SK Telecom are slowly regaining control. Baron is up as well. You now have split objectives. We could see teams prioritizing one over the other and trading. And it means you have to have vision in both spots. Orianna can actually solo the Elder Drake, but I believe there's a ward in the back of the pit that can see it's burning this. Down so but it's burning here. down so quick. Samsung isn't there to defend it. Baron is available though, and that will be the next battlefield. And Samsung, don't choose to fight over the Elder Dragon. Right, but with zero elemental drakes, this Elder Drake is actually very non-threatening as far as Samsung is concerned. It's a very small amount of true damage burn. Which is also the reason why SKT were able to burn it down so quickly. Much easier to kill it uh, the less drakes that you have. Lower risk, also lower reward. Is this the moment that Samsung turned the game around? They're still down 5,000 gold. They have to fight against an Elder Dragon buff SKT. Vision, I'm looking at not the greatest in and around that Baron Pit. Some defensive wards from SKT. And neither team going to set up. Two GAs on both sides, but Duke is on cooldown. Also have to worry about scaling at the moment. I mean, Aurelian Soul, the drawback you know, to the great early game in the ro roaming prowess is 
know, drop off of that damage as you go later into the game. Faker on this Orianna, he's level 18, he's peaking, he's almost six item, full item build here for Orianna. Faker yeah. can completely destroy a team fight, whereas Crown has to do so much to zone and keep his AD carry up. A lot of DPS from Samsung has to come from Ruler. All eyes will be on Ruler for the team fight. Completely agree, and he's been the target of some poor positioning in a lot of these earlier fights. Also, if we're thinking about the way that Samsung can actually make plays in a standard setting, if it's not SKT going at Baron earlier on when they had a 10,000 gold lead, you would expect it to be the Aurelian Sol with a hyper carry behind it, setting up those zones, but they don't have enough control of the minion waves or necessarily the champions or lead to do it. So it's really hard for them to get control back in this game. Duke very close to securing Flame Horizon on QB. One bright side to Samsung Galaxy, their champion's range could theoretically stay out of range that Shockwave, but they cannot afford a mistake. Ruler has Arcane shifted and flashed forward aggressively so many times. Most of them have actually backfired. Ambition does not follow the Lee Syndrome. Instead, backs away. Yeah, Faker again. Picking up his sixth item, Zonia's Hourglass, before 40 minutes. He did the same thing in game one. Now it becomes fucking picks. Wow, Flash was used by Wolf in exchange for a ward. No Dragon's Rage. If a Baron fight were to break out for the next minute and a bit. And instead, it's just a vision battle again. It's Kobe, both of these teams are now trying to play around the Baron. You can see how pivotal it is to initiate plays for both teams. And because of all the extra damage here on SKT, they've been able to gain control of this Baron pit. And establishing vision is that all important first step because of the importance of the pick. If Samsung get a pick, they don't have nearly as much damage to threaten. Has and no Ruler, chance. the prime target! Brought out by at least one shot from the oh. The second swims past Ambition. I think he's in a little bit of trouble, but he's going to be able to repel up by a lot of time. That is so much poke, though, and Samsung doesn't have the sustain nor the vision of the Baron Pit to deal with that in the right fashion. Ruler has to stick around now at half health. Shots onto Ambition. He's still got that GA. This can see if starts a Baron. Watch for Vang to hold on to that crit shot as long as he can. Uses it on the Baron. He's got to reload yeah. now. Cubase not pushing forward. Stuns up Bang. Already trying to back away. Cubase in trouble. Two hours. Cuba's verdict has sent SKT away. Wolf gets hit by the Baron. It's helping Samsung. Wolf goes down. Core JJ oh. gets his first kill of the game. Bengi and Duke, they want to reply. Not only do Samsung stop Baron, they get a kill as well. Samsung still have life in there. Still fighting here. They're able to take down Wolf with the help of Baron. Pincer movement there, and they buy more time in the game. And look at the summoner spells. Only Flash used by Cube. And here, you mentioned Bang wanted to hold on to the fourth shot. He doesn't, and that gives Cube an opportunity. But it's all about the Poppy ultimate here. Ruler zones Faker up from the side. Wolf is again trapped between Baron and the enemy team. And Bang just barely flashes that last heroic charge. Otherwise, it could have been two kills for Sam. Cube did an immense amount of work in that team. Sam's going Samsung. for Baron. They're the ones tanking it. All of SKT is here. It's in calls, firing, lands onto Cube. Star Surge not going to stun anybody. Crowns taking damage, throws down the GLP. Baron's helping out. Only Cube is Faker. caught. Fake is tagged. Bang's on the back line. Faker uses the hourglass. He's bought so much He's time. Popping. Faker is killed. Duke gets his GA popped as well. He's gonna spawn, but here comes Bang. Bang's running low on ammo. Whisper wants blood, but he's running away. Deadly Flourish finds nobody, and this time round, SKT stopped Baron at the cost of Faker's life. And it's just the one death and not the Baron, as you say. Wolf was returning from base, so Samsung do a very bold Baron start with the complete intent of peeling off to kill Faker, but SKT manages their defeat there. And they even traded one Guardian Angel of Peace for the Axis here. All right, here comes Samsung. They pull off of the Baron, and Duke walks away with the Shockwave active. Ambition, once again, targets Faker, kicks him into the team, and the rest of them take care of the damage.
And the margins in these fights are so slim. Look at how low everyone is on Samsung as they do that. Back and they're forced again. again. No Faker this time. This is not a replay. Fake is still dead for five more seconds. No flash on Bang either if Ambition can get him. 4,000 hit points on Baron. Strangle forms on by time. Bang, he's caught out the pit. Ambition decides to peel for the fight. Ambition takes a lot of damage. But Duke is the target. He's tanking up Whoa. five members of Sang Sum. Ruler goes oh. forward to the arcane ship. Faker is alive. Kill. He's on Faker the way. Faker is respawned. And here comes Faker! Are you kidding me? You have to work so hard to take the late game of first SKT. They are run off of the Baron. Faker revives. I just want to take a moment to appreciate the intensity that this game has delivered when it seemed like it was going to be a walkover for SKT. Samsung not saying die, regaining their composure and making aggressive calls that aren't desperate because they're willing to peel at the right time and they're peeling as a unit towards this Baron. It's not necessarily winning them the game, but for being down so far in this game as well as this series, they are putting up a heck of a fight. And clutch plays. We've kept highlighting it. We gave credit to SKT. I think we need to give credit to Ambition. This guy, back-to-back -back plays onto Faker, who we talked about having so much damage, being full build, full level Orianna. And he's able to find it twice. Step back and look at the Hollow Samsung. Two games of this series, they have dug deep. They've waited for an opportunity, and they've allowed themselves to extend the game. We're going to another 50-minute match in the Championship Series World Finals. This was meant to be a 3-0, and yes, it still could be. Samsung is showing way more spirit than a lot of people gave them credit for. I agree, but we also have to look at what is still a Herculean effort for them to come back from. SKT's team has just so much health to cut through. Duke's build is insane. He's transitioning for later and later game tank items, and Samsung just might not have the DPS to kill him in these fights. Vase caught up by Curtain Call. Tidal Wave used as well. 4JJ's going low. Ambition has joined the fight. Aqua Prison locks up two, and Cuba's gonna finish his teleport. They've knocked Bengi backwards. A two-man shockwave, but not onto the yeah. DPS. GPA is gonna be used, and <laughs> that means Cuba's in trouble. Gonna start him back out. Safeguard saves his life. Ruler still zoning away Duke doing so much damage, looking for those mystic shots. Samsung Galaxy are not done yet. Baker again puts the Orianna ball on a member of the front line who's trying to escape. Does get two in it, but it only hit the tanks. Yeah, he's not hitting the money shockwaves you want him to get onto Ruler, Core JJ, and Crown. But with that being said, is it is a tankier backline for Samsung than they had the last time Faker played Orianna, so not necessarily the one-shot potential on a lot of these targets. Very, very true. And neither team willing to fully commit to the end of that fight because they know the next team fight, complete victory, will be the game. Baron is up, and whichever team is victorious in that team fight will have a tremendous amount of pushing power. We're also seeing Ruler having some good fights on Ezreal, where late game in fights he was struggling on Caitlyn. This is why they picked it for him. Duke, though, would have to teleport in to stop this Baron. Well, Samsung are going to peel away. They've not fully committed uh -oh. for the objective. Duke has decided not to teleport in yet. He's uh -oh. going to have an advantage. It's huge. QV doesn't have teleport. Duke does. They didn't force the teleport out from Duke. That means SKT can force 5v4s at Baron. SKT forcing that cross map, and they're going to get the advantage and positioning around Baron Pit, which is crucial, taking down the vision. Duke's got over 120 CS advantage over QV and has really had QV's number throughout the majority of the series. Will he be where SKT need him in these coming minutes? Uh, looks like QV's trying to chase him away. How many more plays does Ambition have in him? Can he find Faker or Bang again? I mean, this guy, this is... For me, the most successful role swap of all time. Ambition was a great professional mid laner, voted to the LCK All-Star team, and now he's on the world stage making plays. Duke, though, starting it off. No lockdown from the Jin, and now all of a sudden Ambition forced to back away. Curtain Call looking for some targets, his very BP tanks. 0 for 4 on the shots, too. That's important because SKT needed the poke onto Whoa. Samsung with Baron and Elder Drake now on the field. You can tell both teams are feeling the tension here and the importance of that next fight. Where is the priority? Samsung have another shot at Elder Drake. Uh, Vision, there's a pink ward in the pit for SKT, and it's very clear SKT have had control of the Baron, but Core JJ forced a flash. 
shockwave wasn't actually used by Faker. So important with the amount of tension around these objectives. And those are the rewards of winning the vision battles. Oh my goodness, Bangi misses the cocoon. Also notice the little race going down on the bottom side. Cube's doubt trying to match Trundle without a teleport advantage. So he's staying really close to him at all times to try and prevent him from forcing a 5v4. But like you say, the vision battle around Baron is SKT trying to chip away at Samsung. Still 60 seconds on the cooldown for Cube's teleport. Samsung are dancing on a knife's edge challenging the vision that SKT has set up. That's why SKT is somewhat in control of this passage of play. With teleports, with vision control, it's Samsung that have to regain control. And it's a little crazy quick shot because we've been on this knife's edge for 13 minutes. <laughs> Since Samsung's Baron power play ran off, we've had an Elder Drake taken by SKT, them not doing anything with it, Elder Drake respawning, and in that time, the gold lead hasn't changed. Everyone has hit max items, and we are still at a stalemate. Samsung set out to prove how great of a team they are, and that they didn't just slink into the finals. Definitely proven it thus far in the series. Again, Faker trying to burst down Elder. This time around, though, Samsung are closer. Ambition's not there. Don't think they can get there quick enough. 5,000 hit points it may be enough for a challenge. Duke is on the front line, looking to burn down Crown. Elder Dragon is secured by SKT. Crown takes so much damage from the curtain call. Cubase trying to back away. The call is run. The call is run. Samsung are trying to follow Ruler. Cubase flashed over the wall. Ruler Arcane ships to safety. The dash, the dive. Nobody's died just yet, but Samsung are ticking. They're low and in trouble. Even if they get back to the base, they're so low, they're going to have to heal. And SKT have positioning to return to Baron with the Elder Dragon buff. Clutch secure there. The Ezreal all came through, and I saw it at 400 health, so that was very close to a steal. But as you say, the health bar is too low. Looks like SKT can get this, but teleport. Samsung, they're trying to stop it. And SKT have got so much damage. I don't think they'll get here in time. Baron down to 1,500. Looks like it's secured. Baron and Elder for SKT. Cubase now left alone. No support until Ambition safeguards his way into the pit. Baker Faker has shot wave. They're locked in. Stunned up against the wall. Bruno and Bilder. It's Bengi. It's Pop. The GA looking to respawn. Cube still running for his life. Ruler, true shot barrage. Gonna be dodged by the third. Bang, he's out of Anna. That's a great hammer. Ambition is still fighting in the front line. Ruler running low on mana. The Arcan ships forward. Trading the other. That's a shutdown. That's another. Duke is now the next target. GA pop inside the pit. Ruler sends the mystic shot over the tri bush. Duke is going to die. It's a double for Ruler. SKT lose three. And Samsung can push up the mid lane. They're already onto the minions, trying to get an inhibitor turret for themselves. Over the death timers are so long at this point. Post 50 minutes, they're just looking to break inside SKT's base. The thing is, SKT got the Baron and the Elder Drake, so Samsung is trying to make this buffless push. But it's against a support and a juggler, so they can definitely get an inhibitor. 20 seconds on Faker. As soon as he revives, they have to get out of town. How much do they want though with that death timer? Do they go for more? Inhibitor number one is down. Inhibitor number two should fall. Another Aqua Prison from Wolf not doing enough. Samsung play the long game and they back away. Cocoon onto Ambition. Bengi's doing what he can to hold them in place, but it's simply not enough. We talked about Samsung having a similar style to SKT during their world's play. They can punish mistakes too. And Let's another Baron fight gone wrong for SKT. Yes, they get the Baron, but then watch. Faker is holding his Shockwave, trying to get this off onto anyone from Samsung who approaches. But Cube gets the stun. Ruler goes around the back and Crown enters to burst him down incredibly quickly. You can tell how important it is for them to take out Faker at the beginning of the team fight. Crown just went straight through the front line as QB makes a beat line for him. Yeah, and then Bang gets caught up in the root and then is able to flash back. So you're wondering when can Samsung get him? Lee Sin kick knocks him up, gets him low. Ruler shifts forward to finish him off. Those are the main threats that Samsung need to take down first, and they do. And you have to keep track of the Guardian Angels in this. Oh, Ruler though! Not gonna go down, tidal wave is sidestep, curtain call. Look at this, Samsung is so split up. Not enough pressure though, and Samsung 
Can they turn this around? Teleport's available for Duke. Again, we are in the split push. He's going to be able to try and combat some of those supers. We're in such a crazy situation here because SKT need to control the minions of both mid and bottom, trying to overextend, but still be able to get back to their base to defend top. But they have empowered recalls on the people who didn't die, which is Bangi and Wolf. So they're the first ones to defend this one. Maybe they're going to be able to defend it. Samsung setting up pressure in the top lane. Duke still in the bottom lane. Baron will be up for 30 seconds. It's a minus 200 power play thanks to the fact that they lost so many members, inhibitors and waves, and Samsung at 53 minutes, they may be in control of the map. Well, they've certainly regained heart, and Samsung are fighting with everything they have. And it's such a wacky game, but we also have to try and find something normal within it. And it's SKT's confidence in Baker's Oriana late in the game, because every time he's made it to this point, he has landed the Shockwave, which can eventually clinch it. But they're running out of missed Shockwave opportunities. Samsung with two inhibitors down, on the prowl for the third, looking to win the game. Vision is going to safeguard out. You can feel the tension. Ruda gets tagged again, curtain call. But he's just going to catch all of the shots. Well, Crown actually steps into two of them. It is so hard to push without buffs this late in the game, especially against Orianna and Jin. And they're running out of time with this push because Duke is wailing away on the bottom minion wave. Exactly. You think that, yes, the extra inhibitor being down is enough pressure to, to draw away the members, but SKT, even with three members defending, are able to hold on, and they're buying extra time for the inhibitors to come back up. Have we ever seen a game where somebody gets double flame horizon? It's 150 at the moment. We're approaching the point where minions don't matter at all. Oh, look at that damage. Good flash. Voice of Light on the They're going to get him. Maybe. Vision. Poor JJ. They're looking to shut him down. Stranglethorns catches Duke. It's Core JJ that kills Faker. Duke uses the subjugate. He's running for his life. But you can't outrun five members of Samsung. Baker goes for the plate, doesn't get it. SKT down 3d5. Jet, we laughed when you brought up the reverse sweep of KT Rolster against uh, SKT. But Samsung here are looking to end the game off of those kills. The solo laners of SKT are down. Watch the minion waves. They do not have minions. Bangi is cutting it off in the mid lane. These turrets are so hard to stop. They do not control Bangi, and he pulls it around. Curtain call inside the base is going to cause more headaches for Samsung. The game's not won yet. Bengi's pulling the minion wave. Samsung going to go for maybe the safest option. 30 seconds for Faker, 40 seconds for Duke. Win or die. That is what's on the line for Samsung Galaxy. How hard is it to beat SKT? They're at 100,000 gold, 55 minutes, still 5v3. Samsung looking for inhibit number three. It's going to fall, the tower that is as Samsung look to grab another inhibitor. They are still down in gold. And SKT will have a full complement of champions to defend the next wave. Those mid and bottom inhibs should be up very, very soon. And the thing is, even with all three inhibitors down, we're gonna have another respawn of Baron and Elder Dragon to fight over for these guys. The big deal is that SKT has so many minions to clear, but a pick onto a member of Samsung would buy SKT more time. Yeah, the Lee Sin ult being down may buy SKT some time to regain vision control in the Baron area, but Ambition incredibly tanky at this point. One inhibitor back up for SKT. As long as they don't lose three at the same time, because that's what prevents the, tri the double super minion spawn in the waves. So they have two inhibitors now respawning because they were killed in fairly quick su succession. And the auras that the super minions have that buff up the other ones also double stack on themselves. Samsung have to do a lot of work to get themselves that buff, to get themselves the double inhibs. Half an hour ago, I asked you, at what point do you start believing? Staples believes as the let's go Samsung chance erupt across the stadium. Baron is alive in five seconds. Elder will spawn in the not too distant future, but this time it's Samsung with the vision control. Cuve does not look for the flash stun. I, I seriously thought he might. Yeah. I mean, Faker was without summoner spells, so he's very aggressive to be up that far, but he knew Samsung didn't have the damage follow-up if QB were to have gone for that flash stun. And this is where you can't make a mistake. Comets of Legend interrupted. Khan doesn't want to overreach because of how much is at stake. 
Samsung are going to start Baron, and will they look to complete it or peel for the fight? We're going to find out. Here we go. All five in the pit. They'd want to peel off. They saw Faker in the lane. He can't make it the fight immediately. They might just try to burst it. It looks like they're going for the burst. Ambition dives back in. It's secured. Samsung get the Baron. Now they need to win the fight. Ambition dives in. GA's not popped just yet. Crown, poor JJ. They're well, going for Shockwave. And Stalker, look what? at that hammer. There's a Shockwave. A shockwave. Faker uses the Hourglass to stay alive. Ambition, Ruler, and Crown running for their lives. They need to survive Duke. Bengi flashes oh. forward. His GA is now popped. Ruler's still got a lot of hit points, a lot of mana, but he doesn't have a lot of support. Crown is down, and Ruler's running for his life. He has Flash and Heal, but three members to deal with. He the the Powered Minions, it's not done yet. Flash and Heal still up for Ruler. Here comes Ambition, sidesteps away from the Deadly Flourish. This is three versus five, and Samsung are cornered. SKT closes in. They what do Faker gets him. They lose Ruler. Now Fake is the target. Ambition's got a GA. Cuvee's doing what he can. He too can survive for a few seconds longer. Flash away from Ambition. The Baron still stands. Can he defend? They need to buy time. 30 seconds for Core JJ. <laughs> Another shockwave! Oh. A shockwave started the fight, a shockwave ends the fight. But that goes to show how long Samsung delayed and how they prevent that first death from being the end of the game. Core 70 second death timers, and somehow Faker gets two ults in the same fight. And Core JJ is already back up for Samsung. The real big issue, though, is once again, Elder Dragon is up. That will be SKT's prize. Actually, it will it even? Crown is coming back up as well. We get another one of these team fights, baby. We gotta watch this again because Faker's coming around from the top side as Samsung burst it down since Bengi couldn't make it in immediately, but the GAs stay in the front for SKT. So they're zoning out this team fight well. The ultimate comes down from Syra, and you think here they've turned it, but that's when Faker gets the shot. He also ejected one kill for themselves right there. Here it goes, though. Ambition actually trying to get some vision onto this Elder Dragon. Now, it definitely is not worth gotta give it up. sacrificing your life to steal at this point. The power of a champion is way too big. Yeah, they would love to be able to get a cheeky steal because if they can get the four elemental Drake Elder, that would be enough power to win. Some support coming up. Uh, Ruler's coming in from the base, though. Bang's not there. Bang is showing himself on top lane. SKT, what is it? I don't no, know what is happening. SKT can't fight. force this with Bang Top. It, ambition has moved on to the Elder. It's now helping out in SKT. It's reset for the second time. SKT do not get the Elder Drake. <laughs> okay. I'm going to talk that one up to Adrenaline from Bangi, just straight up oh. fighting the Elder Dragon. Duke should have been the one hitting the minion wave, which is what they have set up now. So they okay. can teleport in if they need to, and they can manage the minion wave to begin with. But once again, this could be the first game, I feel like, in the history of League of Legends, where a team gets three Elder Drakes and still doesn't win. Because if SKT gets this Elder, it's not the end of the world for Samsung, because it's a zero elemental Drake Elder here. And SKT not willing to fight over that. They've now given up priority oh, and man. spacing. Oh, this is Samsung, a... they've committed. Duke would have to teleport in to stop this. It takes them longer to kill it because they have four elemental drakes already. A lot of damage from the curtain call. Once again interrupted, Zyra Plant's keeping it tagged. Faker trying to zone off to allow Bang to get the full ultimate down. Remember, Duke is clearing out minions in SKT's base though. This is SKT defending four versus five, the Elder Dragon. Samsung move up bottom lane though. And every defense will actually pull SKT to a spot on the map. And with three exposed inhibitors, if Samsung get the right rotation, they oh. can force it, but they can't get caught out. This is so scary. Bang Bang to go Bang. Here comes Crown, voice of light. Bang Bang's in trouble, but so is Ambition. True Shot Barrage will not be enough to kill him or pop the GA, but it is Ambition that does. He needs to save God out and does not do so. SKT get themselves that was the first kill of the fight. Samsung are not backing away yet. They've got a big minion. Oh, Faker finds him. That might be the pick that wins the game. Wolf loses his life, as does Bengi. It continues to be a 3v3. But Bang and Faker stay alive. Faker's clutch, Oriana. How many times does he miss? But SKT never lets it lose the game for them. He catches <laughs> Ruler as he's going in for the fight. Quick shot just took off his tie because he can't handle this game anymore. 62 minutes in, and even with that, SKT, because they lost Wolf and Bengi, the game goes on. I, I'm going to say right now that the longest game currently at Worlds, the record is 70 minutes and 20 seconds. So it's a possibility that we do approach that here in the finals. But look at this pick. Because they don't have the extra vision, Ambition is actually the one surrounded by SKT. And yep. then 
after that ruler with the arcane shift in tries to you know salvage the situation or something I, this yeah. play right here there's no no real reason for this. Definitely misplayed fight early by Samsung. He's going for a pick on a Faker, but with the shift and no flash up, Faker immediately turns it around. But that also sets up some damage as Crown is on the side of this fight with a six item Aurelian Soul. Bang also did a great job there flashing that heroic charge. And man, the intensity here of this game. Benchies Veil popped by Qve and Elder Dragon plus four Drakes. <laughs> helping Crown out as far as damage is concerned on that Aurelian Soul. And you know, I'm, I'm starting to believe he's comfortable on that champion. It doesn't matter that we're 65 minutes in. The early game and everything that happened an hour ago is now irrelevant. Absolutely. The Elder Drake started again. Crown was top lane, shoving a minion wave in. But with a 17,000 health Elder Drake, it's not like that thing evaporates. Definitely does not. He fights his way out of the pit here. All right, a moment of calm here, quick shot. Stop uh, vacillating yep. here. You now, mentioned longest game of Worlds this year. Longest game in World Finals history, I'm willing to say. Also, another record, Faker has, in this game, surpassed Uzi with the most kills of any single player at World. 209 kills now racked up over his career for Faker. Another 20 CS will give Duke a double flame horizon. I can't say that I've ever seen that either. Duke is with the team this time around. Now slowly moving to the top lane, has to answer that wave, pushing into the SKT base. Baron is up in 30 seconds, there is no vision. And I just wanted oh to see the damage. We're word. nearing 100,000 damage for Bang, which I have never seen if they're able to win another fight. Like, this game has had so much conflict, it's insane that it's not over yet. I, if he gets 100,000 damage in a game, well, you well then they're going to be world champions, you think. <laughs> The thing is, even if Samsung do that, they still need to win two more games. Ambition once again, uh -oh. caught by a cocoon and a bubble. Blue buff, I think, goes over to Rula. That could be very important. Elder still on the map. Baron now on the map. Remember how incredibly important the Guardian Angels are in this game as well. Because of the deaths previously for Samsung, they've had to sell theirs, whereas SKT have two extra lives on the front line. And we talk about the DPS that Samsung has is lacking, especially against the healing and shielding and tanks of SKT. So that's only exacerbated by the fact that it's two GAs to zero. And the thing is, Core JJ has been the one to take up the extra damage because he's on Zyra. He's a mage. This is Core JJ is bringing the extra damage that the other lanes are lacking compared to the Nami here uh, for SKT, which is full support. Bingy playing very far forward, zoning away ambition, threatening the cocoon. Did he flourish from Bang? I don't think it found a target. And Samsung Galaxy now backing away. SKT trying to get some control in that Elder Dragon Pit. Yep, Baron is also up again, though. So again, we have these split-focused objectives, as we had 30 minutes ago. <laughs> but eventually, it has to have an impact on any of the game. The chokes are so important. And as you mentioned, because Core JJ has that Death Cup, it makes the chokes even more dangerous for both teams. And look at the wards. Both of the teams do have wards behind their opponents. Teleports are ready for both top laners. And SKT once again start up this Elder Dragon. Look at those two lanes. Somebody has to deal. QV's in the top. It looks like Crown is coming in from the bottom. Samsung threatening this fight. You have to teleport in early because they need every member there at the start of the fight. So you have to be very careful about that long teleport time. Black Curtain Call is going to tag Rula with one. Ambition the second and third. Dragon is still tagged. It's not reaching. Oh, it. Teleport's now coming in. It might be too late. Four and a half thousand hit points. Ambition's looking to chase out. The shockwave still available. The poppy copter sends three away. You can Faker left alone. The dragon's still tagged. Bangy's not there to finish Elder. Here comes the rest of it. Let's reset the Star Surge. Not going to lock anybody up, but Crown down. He's tagged. He's down. He's killed. But at what cost? Both it's GAs. GA. The Dragon's still alive, helping out. Rula is now on the wrong side of the fight. He's in trouble. Flash is still available. The Dragon, oh my god, it reset again. <laughs> the double GAs came in so key there as the Frontline sacrifices themselves, and we get more finals. I don't have a voice for more finals. I'll take over play by play. I got you. <laughs> Samsung Galaxy continue to fight. Let me tell you, if they do go down in this game, it's going to be the longest 3 0 in world finals history, <laughs> that's for sure. Watching this fight, Cuban, Cuban, next three. Boom.
members and the solo limb. Solo laners of SKT left by themselves. And they can't lock down Faker post on is because he flashes in the proper direction. SKT though, right for Elder. I think this Samsung is Samsung are running for Baron though yeah. right now, trying to establish vision control and force oh, SKT to steal? that ambition. He he Ambition steals the Elder Dragon! He gets away with the lives! This is a four Drake Elder Dragon! He lives! Ambition saves the game once again! Could that be the breaking point that sends Samsung in game four in this endless game? 2013 LCK mid lane all-star transfers the jungle, picks Faker in multiple fights, steals the Elder Dragon, and buys Samsung a he chance been, at the Baron. He has been so clutch this game. The initiations as well as the steal, but he has to do it again. Smite is up. They want SKT to fight them. The Elemental Drakes empower them so much. They want to peel for the fight. Let's see if they can. Tidal Wave's coming out. The focus is the Baron. Ambitions tag the Sonic Wave. He follows it. They peeled out from the fight. Wolf is in pack. Watch for Shockwave. Where is damage. it? That's Cube. He's in trouble. The GA was popped. Bang's already used that QSS. He's backed away with his life. Nobody else dies, but a GA is popped. Are you kidding me? SKT defend the Baron against a Quadra Elemental Drake team without suffering any casualties? There's a huge minion wave top that they have to deal with right now, though. It's drawing Faker away, and it's going to buy him a little bit more time. Starting up the Baron again. Here yeah. comes the engage. Let's see what happens. SKT don't have as many tools this time around. Flash. Bubble comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Secured by Samsung. Holy Ooh. crap. All They're right. Still trailing gold. That's the most amazing thing. Quick chance for a breath. Samsung need to take this opportunity. The Elder Drake essentially secured them the Baron. It's down in 15 seconds. They have shown the ability to win fights, but they're very close fights. They're going to have to be very careful about moving in here because there's still one shockwave or another 10,000 damage from Bang away from losing the game. And now the Guardian Angel advantage is back over to Samsung as Ambition yep. three purchase. Split push. Ambition, no flash, but he can ward hop away. No threat just yet. Look at those minions hammering away on the inhibitor. Top lane is under pressure as well. q is looking to break open the top. Ambition and Ruler, they break open the bottom. Pressure now moving. The Mage Core JJ on that full build Zyra. Now putting pressure on the middle inhibitor. Up top is that, that's all three. three, that's three. Here we go, SKT last stand. Samsung Galaxy and SKT have had the longest game at World 2016, and the world might be stunned if Samsung can close this out. They're on the pressure. The Nexus turrets are being focused, and there's so many minions. Three inhibitors down, double stacked up, super minions empowered by the Baron buff. This is the onslaught. Samsung, we're waiting to pull off. Duke's in trouble. He gets kicked the wrong way, though. Crown throws out the voice of light. Bang is down, then forced away. He's onto the fountain to regen. The first Nexus turret is down. I asked if you believe. Staples, you got behind Samsung. They're now in the final fight. Strength of Thorns buys down. Crown oh, in trouble. Oh, but it's Duke that gets killed. Ruler, Arkane shifts forward once again. So aggressive. They are so low. Away. Crown barely lives and he's going to have to go back to base the heal after that one. But one that's more a building without him. It's not the over. Nexus. The Nexus is down. Samsung stunned the world and defeats SKT for the first game in finals. Standing ovation from the crowd here at Staples Center, but a measured response from Samsung because that's what it took to win one game against SKT. They need to do it twice more. But the most important part is that now their faith is restored. Samsung again can come into the next game with some confidence. The dejected looks after game two are gone. Both 80 carries as Samsung gets the loudest cheer of the night exiting the stage. Both 80 carries did over 100,000 damage to champions in the longest game in world history.
I don't Samsung know. Samsung upset SK. Ooh, 14 okay. seconds short. Oh no! <laughs> this is the longest. <laughs> so get this. The longest game of Worlds 2016 by a good minute. But it was 14 seconds short. OMG of the versus Fnatic. OMG Fnatic. That was the record. Still counts. I'm so but what a game. Down 10,000 gold. They won the game with a gold deficit. They were still down 600 gold at the end of that match. Gold, we were far I, past I'm the aware point of, of gold matter. I'm aware of that, but just the, the, the insanity of how they won in the yeah. hour and 10 minutes is unheard of. Core JJ did 76,000 damage to champions.